Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide, and I think that shows taste and breeding on your part. Next up, I know, I know, some of you are going to run for the doors. It's, uh, I, we got to cover it on occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Rusty uh, Trombone himself, the hippie Alex Jones, is, uh, uh, got a, t a video titled, Oh Shit, It's Really Happening. Now, we've, not we've noted before that this, um, the conspiracy is already occurring style of titles for this stuff. And then the oh shit part where he, uh, or oh fuck, where he asterisks out the, uh, the, the vowel and the swear word um, in an attempt to, I guess, I guess stand on top of the idea that people who swear are more honest. Is that what he's doing? Um, so uh, this is uh, hopefully not too terribly long. We'll see. Hey, 99% hey. of people hey. with an IRA or 401k hey. will not see this video. And Good news, yeah. everyone. The oh, fuck me. Relax. Good news, everyone. The IMF. IMF, politicians, and the private sector are all getting together to discuss central bank digital currencies. That means that we won't need cash no more and we can be monitored all the time. That's going to be a much better society. Oh, my God. Okay, so central bank digital currency. That's a crypto, um, a blockchain form of monetary exchange. Um, basically, uh, the, the Fed bonds and the way the Fed trades money from bank to bank um, will, will now be done in, in, in a blockchain format, which is easier to track and uh, harder to fake is the idea. But what it means is, is that we're going to move to a cashless society and they're going to know all the naughty things you spend your money on. And that was the plan all along because he, he says so. For everyone and definitely won't lead to social credit scores and being manipulated and having your bank shut down, will it? Surely. But, and by the way, the title of this is, oh, oh shit, it's really happening. So apparently it's already happening. What? You, what are you thinking? What? You. <laughs> There's a lot of talk about digital currencies. Some, yeah. What's a what's a digital currency, Russell? People are excited about Bitcoin and those ones that sound like Ethereum and metals from superhero movies that can change the world. Those kind of ones. Imperium, Objectivo, those kind of currencies. Well, new Prime Minister of UK and Goldman Sachs former employee of the year and WEF protege, and I hope none of these things contradict one another or bring about a conflict of interest. Well, I don't really care because you guys pulled out of the EU and you're basically an island currency at this point anyways, so don't really give a fuck. Um, uh, up to you guys if you want to do that. Meanwhile, you're also not a reserve currency. The pound is not... a there's not enough of it in circulation to matter on the world scale. Um, that's why pulling out of the EU was such a, um, you know, the, the euro especially was particularly damaging to the UK uh, economy and why it's eating shit right now. Rishi Sunak or Radish Sinatra, as your president Joe Biden calls him. Rishi Sunak is now the prime minister. Is a keen advocate of CBDCs, Central Bank Digital Currencies. Here he is, in fact, advocating for them. Today, I'm proud to say that under the UK's presidency, the group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote. <laughs> I like it, because we've got a broad concept. Uh, hmm, what if this person's an idiot? Which we think that they are. It's like... All right. Uh, people don't necessarily know what a CBDC is, and he is explaining it in a way that it's relatively new. I don't know why this is a dunk. This is just Russell trying to inject himself into this conversation apropos of nothing. Like a digital penny for your digital money box for your digital shithole that you live in. You will own nothing. You will be happy. Okay, again, this is the uh, World Economic Forum. <coughs> that could be... I don't know what the fuck pig noise thing was. Is that a Olaf Schultz reference or is it a reference to this guy? Oh, or, or Animal Farm? What do we think? Used alongside physical notes and coins. For now, till we phase them out, if you start any little trucker protests, oh, where's my money go- First of all, everybody uses a digital form of money right now, asshole. It's called a credit card or a debit card. 
Nobody goes to a fucking store when they pay with a debit card and goes to a machine, like literally to an ATM, pays for it there, and then has to hand it in cash to the cashier who puts it back into a machine. Good news, for everyone. Fuck's sake. The IMF. Oh, oh, for fuck's sake. I jumped back. Sorry, I hit my own. Oh, really? They're working together? Well, that's just such great news. The IMF, the World Bank. Why don't we involve the WEF and the WHO? What we need are... Also... Unrelated. The WEF is not a, a world, is not um, a World Bank, is not a, an institution that affects monetary policy. It's a discussion forum. It's like the, the uh, Council on Foreign Affairs. Unelected global bodies that have... You elected him. ...been able to co-opt political power, respond to financial... Co-op political power, you're literally talking about a bunch of democracies meeting together. We elect our leaders, our leaders meet with other democracies, and they talk about this shit. What the fuck? ...power and ignore and oppress ordinary people, whether it's the recent medical emergency or the cost of living crisis. The recent medical emergency, which is, uh, we're supposed to take away, by the way, is bullshit. We're seeing the benefits all around us. I can't wait for your next policy. You're going to take our money now. This is great. Looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. I think I know what it means in practice. I think you don't. More power for you, no power for us. This is Who's us, motherfucker? You're worth, like... How much, what's his net worth again? 18 million? Includes issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient. Oh, it's gotta be energy efficient. I was about to say, is it energy efficient? Is it energy efficient? I've gotta make sure. All right, they have just started the, doing this uh, jump in, jump out, physical cut. Oh, he was appointed prime minister. He was uh, won a general election. Good point. Ours were, let's just say, and the rest of the countries were. But you also uh, elected the party that chose him as the prime minister until you have another general, for the record. Um, but this, like, jumpy back and forth is, uh, I mean, is there a cult reason for this? Did they, it, did they have, like, what would, if Jim Jones was a streamer, what would he do? Is there a pamphlet? Oh, a few other questions. You wouldn't use this ever, would you, to implement control or to advance social credit type systems or to shut down the bank accounts of people you disagree with or to surveil people and have a surveillance network that you've developed in conjunction with big tech and now a financial arm that you're developing so that you can... Somebody's been uh, smoking a, a heavier uh, strain of weed lately. Um... This is this is coming from a guy, by the way, who lives in a country where the cops don't have guns. So the idea is, is that they and some of them do now. But the idea being that um, that if you have cops that arm themselves in any country in the world, because like the U.S., Canadian cops, whatever, Mexico, everybody, you know, that that's a slippery slope. Everything is a slippery slope to the military is going to police the public and there'll be a soldier outside your door and you'll have to get their permission to go outside. And we're basically China now. Like, that's where everything fucking goes. We elect our leaders so that it, this stuff, so that there's a tug and pull between this kind of stuff and how available it is and what the, what the rules will be about it. Because I got news for you. Some form of, uh, like, digital credit worldwide will exist at some point. And having rules about how you do it and especially doing pilot programs to see if it will work and what the limitations are is valuable whenever any new kind of technology comes online. Matter of fact, one of the reasons why we have so much problem with social media is it because it was kind of just a blank flood. Nobody quite knew what the system was, and then boom, here it was. I mean, the bulletin board systems of the late 80s and early 90s were rife with racists and all kinds of awful. And so when it turned over into the more open social media stuff like Facebook and, and, and MySpace, there was this idea that it would kind of it would shape up because it was more like the public square. And in reality, they had to set a shit ton of rules. And the terms of service had to get deeper and thicker all the time. Hello. Because you, you had to, they would always find a way around it. Lock step together and gridlock us in a digital prison of surveillance tyranny. That's just, just off the top of my head. Would be 
Well, of course it is. That's the only thing on your head, you dizzy fuck. Energy efficient. Bitcoin and those other digital currencies that we don't control, they're bad. They're they are incredibly inefficient. As a matter of fact, uh, and by the way, they also suck and are nonsense because they're not pegged to anything, so they don't have any value. Um, and having a digital version of of a currency that you actually manage in your country makes a whole lot of sense. But um, let's see. Uh, let's see the... Uh, Mm -hmm. As of August 2022, published estimates of the total global electricity usage for crypto assets are between 120 and 240 billion kilowatt hours per year, a range that exceeds the total annual electricity usage of Argentina or Australia. Bitcoin mining and I guess other uh, cryptos use more energy when being mined than the, the entire country of Australia. So yes, it does fucking matter. And they eat up all the NVIDIA fucking cards and you can't buy any. They're not energy efficient. This one that we will control, that'll be energy efficient. It's fucking, look, I wonder how this asshole feels about stable coins. Stable coins are private cryptos that are pegged to a nation's uh, um, currency, ma mainly the United States dollar. So it would be affected by any changes in the dollar. The manipulation of the dollar from within could affect that currency. You could fuck with people who had it if you were fucking with your own currency and you'd be fine. I, and so therefore, you are reliant on the success of the U.S. dollar, hence the BRICS uh, you know, Petro crypto that they were putting together, which was pegged to the U.S. dollar, is fucking hilarious because they need the U.S. dollar to remain strong and healthy. Otherwise, their crypto cryptocurrency falls into disrepair. Again, this is all just this is all just conspiracy theory shit. This is just again hippie Alex Jones, um, hippie David Ike, whatever. Efficient. So yeah, it's about energy efficiency. It's not about control. Controls like a side effect, just the side effect. Sorry, what? Is one of my eyes stopped moving? And available to- That's a Katy Perry reference. To everyone. Who I believe he used to, uh, fornicate with. Except poor people. A potential CBDC. I'll send you an NVIDIA card for free. Oh, thanks. Is it uh, the, the 40, the, the 4000 series? All right. Could offer businesses and consumers new ways to pay in the future. I expect it'd be convenient, would it? Would it be nice and convenient? Could I have some convenience, please? It'd be so convenient to be in my cell, all lathered up with a nice bubble bath of convenience. It's all. All right, I don't know what the fuck that is. They thought that was cute. They spent time on that. They did. Mm hmm. Went out, they picked a bubble sound effect. They got a little PNG of a bubble bath from someplace, probably have an account for clip art that they pulled it from they decided to pop the word around him to are is he losing audience now that he's moved over to rumble and so now they're trying or is there a rule about holding rumble's attention because i'm going to start streaming to rumble soon and i don't want to have to throw fucking graphics all over the goddamn place to uh remind people Boink. do i have to add a bloop effect sound when i go dwee, dwee, when i when i do stuff just to su succeed on rumble all part of the wider story of digital innovation that has delivered benefits to millions around the world and in the UK. Well, I was just talking to Edward Snowden and Julian Assange about the benefits delivered around the world whereas <laughs> the people of Iraq or Afghanistan or the many people now in Western- I'm sorry, when did you speak to um, Edward Snowden? Because he's literally spoken to no one since the war began. If not before that. Anglophonic countries starving to death and unable to heat their homes. What they need is the small amount of money they have got to do. See that? Yeah, they're just throwing a lot of graphics in. This is an attempt to, this has got to be, there's a hard fade going on. People, I mean, I worry about my show getting repetitive because I deal with these fuckers all the time. But imagine how repetitive their viewers think this shit is. Disappear into binary code. These decisions raise important questions. Lots of graphics now on Russell's show. Questions about the reshaping of our economy. Yeah, I've noticed you've been reshaping it so that ordinary people have no power at all, no alternatives or options, and we can operate entirely at the behest of powerful financial interests like... 
A Goldman Sachs. Have you ever heard? You used to work for them. Oh. Financial system. Also, what? Uh, does it stand out to anybody else that I've never seen him break down anybody else, Boris Johnson or anybody else, through their full statement the way he has with this dude? I wonder what's different about this dude. Systems and the way in which people interact with money and payments. What, like through like a massive hedge fund that funded Moderna? You used to be part of a hedge fund that funded Moderna. Oh, that's. Oh, yeah. Moderna that makes one of the functioning vaccines that actually works. Save millions of lives. What's what's your fucking point? Why working together? Like you work together with your wife, who's like a billionaire. Oh! In the UK earlier this year, I announced a new joint task force. Um, she's not. She's worth seven hundred and twenty million dollars. I guess that's like a billionaire, uh, because she's an heir to an Indian. Uh, tech fortune. Between the Treasury and the Bank of England to look into a potential CBDC as a complement to cash and bank. Wait a minute. It's, <clears throat> I was promised, <clears throat> excuse me, I was promised, oh shit, it's really happening. I, I, nobody said anything about a fucking commission that would look into the potential possibilities of the kind of maybe at some point we might actually do um, CBDCs if they work out, we'll see. Bank deposits. It's just a compliment. It's a lovely little compliment. Over here, you've got your money in the bank. Over here, you've got your digital thing. Oh no, what's this one doing? Oh look, it's facing it out, look. And now what's happening? We're in digital prison. Well, I, again, I don't know why, where the fuck... I honestly, I'm losing track of what his actual point is other than any kind of government existing will eventually turn into... Mao's China or the USSR and no one has any say in it and anything new is a sign of an evil conspiratorial scheme. We're also hearing from firms, technology experts and others. Under the leadership of the UK, this report today will help support and inform exploration of CBDCs in the G7 and beyond. They're already talking in code with the acronyms and the shortened terms CBDC G7 because they have access to so much technology and so much You think they fucking invented that? I'm very curious, Russell. How do you feel about the GOP? Data. They want to make us into machines. They want to make... No, they don't. I think Elon Musk does with the Neuralink thing. Us into data. Into entirely information. A component of humanity is doubtlessly our intelligence. But what of... Well, it, you know. You would be the exception, Russell. Our awareness. What about the aspect of a human being that is difficult to define, describe, discern, or tie down? The aspect of you and of me that amounts to our spirit. Ah. Uh. Just the, the stupid. It hurts. Um, hey, fucko, that doesn't go away. That, I mean, you could say the same kind of bullshit about vehicles. You know, if if everyone uses cars to drive everywhere, you know, what about astral projection? Or how I feel if I say, you, if, if you have to hire movers to move the things in your house, how, how does that affect when I feel moved by a Kleenex ad? You know? Our nature, that- Who gives a shit? Hi, you would argue that th when things are less complicated, requiring less of your spirit and your nature to do them, then you could spend that spirit and nature on the things that they were naturally a spirited to do. That which cannot be governed and controlled. Will they not rest until every aspect of human life is tied down and- Who? 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 Who the fuck is they, dummy? You think Rishi Sunak wants to, like, put people in soul prison? For fuck's sake. I, look, 
I recognize Alex Jones took himself out, so it's not a real meritocracy in in this in who's going to be the next Alex Jones. Uh, if it you know, given time, maybe somebody would have gotten their skills together as a broadcaster and as a storyteller and a, as a conspiracy monger, and they would have elbowed him out. But apparently, he decided to take himself out by being a complete asshole, and so everybody who's moving to fill in never really had to grow, never really had to develop any fucking skill. They can just blather about some rando point, assume the they-them storyline, and just act as if. Digitized until every aspect of your life can be controlled and monitored. Your private conversations with your doctor now subject to state edicts. Your protests shut down. Oh, you mean like uh, Republicans trying to outlaw abortion because Dr. Oz think that a woman's choice, um, whether or not to have an abortion, should be between her, her doctor, and the local politicians? Your every conversation observed, your entire life just data points in the hands of Google and Facebook and Apple. No, that's not even possible. Even if they wanted it, they would still only segment out things that would give them a false impression. Apple, what are they turning us into? Nothing. They're not turning you into anything. You're either going willingly or you're f fucking gullible and following this fuckhead around. Nothing. I, look, there was a period, I'd like to remind everyone, where shitheads like this were telling everybody that the internet and, uh, and fluoride in the water was going to make everybody pliant and easy to control. Look around you. Does the world look pliant and easy to fucking control? Does, if they had this big fucking plan to control everybody and, and manipulate them, does it look like it's fucking working? This is also one of the assholes who thinks that the vaccines are the, prob are the way to poison people and, and depopulate the earth. So what the government wants to do is kill all the people that don't want to spread disease and want to be productive members of society and leave themselves alone on a planet with psycho QAnon assholes who guzzle Alex Jones dick pills, listen to this prick, and want to bang down their door with a sledgehammer. How does this make any fucking sense? They are turning us into machines. No, they are not. And the, here's the other thing, the arrogance of this prick, that somehow they're turning us, he means, uh, he doesn't mean us, he means you. He's fine, he's, in, he's somehow immune. He can take in all this shit and he just, it just bounces off him. He's not gullible, he's not a sucker, he's not easily guided. He's operating within the system, but he is not of the system. You, on the other hand, because you're watching him, they're out to get you. They're coming for your brain, for your very soul. They are denying us our humanness. Our no, they are. How is how is how is the the Bank of London creating a digital currency that operates in contra or in concert with printed currency? as it kind of does now, but just has a better chain of custody on it because of blockchain, the same way all the cryptos work. How is that digital fucking slate? All right. Ability to disagree, our ability to be unusual, our um, ability to be strange, our right to be who we are, our right to freedom. Your right to be who you are? I Look, I know I stink, but I'm guessing he does all the time too. Secondarily, no. Um. With these principles... Principles? Sorry, principles? Do you not mean evil master plan? The G okay, again, fuck you! You're, you don't get to project onto other people your own paranoid psycho horseshit and then and punch in like that when it's not based on any fucking thing. This is a statement, a video statement he made to the G7 about CBDCs. Who gives a goddamn? G7 is leading an important step change in the global policy conversation. 
Our shared objective is to ensure that CBDCs will be grounded in long-standing commitments to transparency. Because you've been very good at that. You've been very good at that. I noticed during the lockdown there, all the transparency while our government were having parties, where various state officials in America were having parties, where... Oh, he means uh, Boris Johnson and Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom, who was at dinner with a bunch of people who were vaccinated, they just didn't wear masks when they were together because they were vaccinated. And Boris Johnson was at a party where everyone was vaccinated and they didn't wear masks while they were vaccinated. Also, uh, we didn't have lockdowns in California when that was going on. Schools were shut down. There were some churches that were, you know, like close gatherings because people weren't vaccinated yet. The state officials had all done it, but we hadn't reached a level where it was safe yet. Those people all were. Same thing with Boris Johnson and everybody that was at that, fu that fucking party there. Although they were on the AstraZeneca, so I don't know how quality that uh, that vaccine turned out to be. Redacted documents from Pfizer just pff, disappear like Kaiser Soze. And like that, he's gone. No, you're the guys to bring us transparency. Keep talking. The rule of law and sound economic. Also, um, Russell, um... Who uh, who runs your show? Who operates behind the scenes? I mean, I'm uh, Can't Stop Lion sends me clips to respond to so that I don't see stuff that I've already watched so that I can respond to these things raw. Um, and that's it. My chat is here. I talk to my chat. Sometimes they interject things. Sometimes they request things. Sometimes they bring things up and I bring them in and I try to reference them then when they do. Russell has a whole team of people, including a producer that we've only seen once on his live stream that sits off uh, there that some, seems to have some sort of editorial drive or control. What's that guy's story? Why aren't you being transparent, Russell? Why is it just the Russell Brand Show if there's all these other people working behind the scenes? There was an army of production people. Is that, are there writers? Are there uh, producers? Um, what's the financing like? Where was the initial financing to blow the show up? Why aren't you being... Right. Governance. The G7 will continue its work in this important area, working with others to enhance understanding and use of these principles. Do you think if you keep saying the word principles, we'll mistakenly think you have some? We're excited to be taking... Okay, uh, there's ethical principles, and then there's principles of understanding in a topic. Our, our principal argument is this, this, and this. Our, our principal points uh, of contention are this, this, and this. That, that's what he means by principles, fuckhead. It's a different form of principles. At this point, he's going he's gonna to start talking about Principal Perry from Labyrinth. A leading role with G7 members in publishing this exploratory work, bringing money and finance into the 21st century. Let's look at it in a bit more detail. During the 2022 IMF World Bank Group annual meetings, Cecilia Skingsley, head of the Innovation Hub at the Bank for International Settlements, agreed with other speakers who said introducing a CBDC is not a universal solution and should instead come together with digital IDs in a package. You've tried a few times to get that package, I've noticed. People are coming too much, why have they had a package to make sure that everyone's taken the right medicine? But I thought that medicine, ah! We just need the package, thank you. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, neither does you. he. IMF Deputy Managing Director, Bo Lee. The package of digital IDs meaning like some sort of updated passport or driver's license kind of blockchain awareness so that those are clear so you can't create fake ones like Matt Gates' buddy did. Singled it out as one of the challenges in introducing CBDC. We need a better understanding of what's the cause, what's driving that hesitancy. I keep hearing this word hesitancy. Normally, it's a total lack of trust. One way to- No, it's not. Sometimes, normally, by the way, it's a total lack of understanding. It's not that people don't trust it, it's just they don't know what it's for. It's, by the way, what's killing crypto right now. What the fuck is it for? If you're not a drug dealer or a human trafficker, the fuck do you need Bitcoin for other than to park millions and hope it goes up because Drug dealing and human trafficking is a growth industry. To resolve it relates back to our data question. That is, if we can create enough value, if by joining the ecosystem, if consumers can enjoy a lot more financial services, if they can get credit, maybe they will be willing to join the ecosystem, said Lee. Sounds like a nice ecosystem. Don't sound like I'll be spied on in there or controlled in there. I don't know why I'm so hesitant. Lee also explained. Okay, again. The, the pattern just seems to be that um, 
I'm the I'm just asking questions kind of like I'm just suspicious of the whole thing. I'm hesitant because I don't trust any government institutions. Um, this fucking guy lives under a lot of them, takes all of them for granted, doesn't blow off traffic signs because of some controlling person trying to c- s- throttle traffic in parts of town to destroy the economies of other areas. Doesn't do any of that shit. Doesn't if he goes up to the the counter when he's flying someplace and they ask for his passport or his ID, he doesn't go, the fuck you need to see that for? It's none of your goddamn business. None of that. He just takes it for granted and buzzes right along and then sells this fucking paranoia daily. And how institutions could take advantage of CBDC data by following the model of the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, I love... I love the Chinese Communist Party. Well, I found mostly, I think, is the amount of freedom they give everyone. Where non-traditional data can be very useful for financial service providers to give me a credit score. Yeah, non-traditional data, not just stuff that I willingly give, stuff that... Also, by the way, this is a round table where everybody's uh, piping in. And this woman with a seemingly Chinese name brings up... Uh, China. You take without telling me. In 2021, the Bank of England called on ministers to decide... By the way, we are jumping to a different article and a different publication. Whether a central Uh, bank digital currency should be programmable, ultimately giving the issuer control over how it's spent by the recipient. Wow, that's what you want. Control over how you spend your money. That won't be misused. What they're talking about is like EBT uh, payments. So that if you give somebody money for something, they can only spend it on food and not drugs, for example. It's like a better way to run the welfare system is essentially it. So you you get, you make sure that the help you're giving people actually goes there. Used by power. Or if you're a, a, a bank and you're issuing money to someone to buy a house, it will only work if you actually spend it on that house. So people can't engage in Trumpian, uh, mortgage scam. Powerful corporate state. Tom Mutton, a director at the Bank of England, said there could be some socially beneficial outcomes. Socially beneficial outcomes. Preventing activity which is seen to be socially harmful in some way. I see that as socially harmful in some way. Would you stop it? Nah, smart. Right, I'm free. I said, would you stop it? Ah, my pennies is all gone. Put me piggy bank, mister. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's socially beneficial for you to shut the fuck up. You could think of giving your children pocket money, but programming the money so that it couldn't be used on sweets. So much is revealed by the analogy. They think of us as children. By the way, they don't think of you as children. They're talking about EBTs in that article. This is the this conversation has come Over up a lot. Over whom they oughtn't relinquish ultimate control. The- for, no, no, no. Anybody who's coming to you for help, like what they would use it for and what they're talking about is when people are asylum seekers and they're in England and they've sought asylum there. Uh, and, and this is why conservatives are talking about this, that when they give welfare help to asylum seekers, they're making sure that that help is actually used to feed and house them and not for other stuff. This is not about ordinary currency. That's why it's in concert with other shit. This is about nothing less than your freedom. Who- no, it's <laughs> it's about um, honest exchange in this particular case, what he's talking about. Who you are. Forget, don't forget, but, but recall in addition to your sexuality and your self-expression as an individual member of your class, religion, whatever, your actual freedom to do stuff. You don't be regarded as a child who wants sweets. There is a whole range of things that money... Hold on one second. Uh, Bank of Energy tells ministry to intervene on digital uh, currency programming. Hold on. Bank of England uh, tells ministers to intervene. That should be enough to find the article, one thing. Uh, There we go. This is an article from June 21st. Uh, Bank of... Hold on one second. Bank of... Hold on. Get out of here. Ah, you fucker. Continue reading this article. Okay, the bank, are you rat? Hold on. Uh, Mind Matters AI, Bank of, okay, this is LinkedIn, Telegraph Business on Twitter. This is on Flipboard, here's another version of the article. 
Telegraph at UK. Ah, you fucker. Hold on. I'm trying to find a version of it that isn't. This is in Yahoo Finance. Oh, that's a video. Not helpful. Uh, cryptocurrency, money, trust, and regulation. Okay, yeah. So this relates to that article and borrows part of it. Um, the writer of, uh, this guy writes on cryptocurrency. So take that for what it's worth. You know, with, take it with a grain of salt in that regard. The Bank of England is still mulling over the introduction of a central bank digital currency, CBDC, a digital version of notes and coins directly convertible into cash and deposits. The bank argues this will increase financial inclusion, but introducing the basic bank account has already achieved that. By 2018, 2019, the number of unbanked in the UK dropped by just 1.2 million out of a total population of 67. Uh, the bank also says the public must have access to faster, cheaper retail payments. That is true, but more and more payment services are already providing just that. So basically in lieu of a bank account, and this is usually uh, a dealing with impoverished people or giant transactions. Meanwhile, the Joint Treasury and the Bank of England uh, CBDC task force continues its work, but without such uh, much indication of how to follow uh, how the following hazards will be overcome, if indeed that is possible. The first concern is the effect on credit. The prudent assumption is that 20% of the deposit base of commercial banks could move out of the banking system after the introduction of CBDCs. That is all the uninsured deposits. Sir John uh, Cunliffe, Cunliffe uh, Deputy Governor for Financial Stability at Bank of England admits there is no way of knowing the size and speed of that shift. Clearly, the central bank would undercut commercial banks in terms of, okay. Then there are the thorny issues of privacy. This is the part he's talking about. The proposed CBDC structure is a central bank account. Access through payment interface provider, a PIP, responsible for the know your customer requirements. All transactions are recorded on the bank's core ledger, a fast, secure, and resilient technology platform. People could transfer cash from their bank accounts and put the digital cash into a digital wallet authorized and regulated by the authorities. The PIP owns the relationship with the, cons the customer and provides them with a value-added payment service. It can only connect with the core ledger through the application program interface. They talk to us like we're children. Potentially, this structure gives the central bank access to data about transactions and personal expenditure. Such data is clearly valuable. Basically, this is if all the stuff you would pay for in cash, they would see that the same way they see stuff that you pay for with debits or with credit cards. Monetary policy and interest rate changes could have more immediate effects that, uh, under the current than under the current structure of banking system, since it was it will inevitably restrict. The freedom of commercial banks. The bank rate currently influences, but does not determine the rate banks charge on loans or pays or deposit. Okay. So it's, it's the same thing. Basically, they'll see your cash uh, exchanges the way, if you use this system, the way they would see debits or cash, which if you're paying digitally, you know this. could do programmable money that we cannot do with the current technology, where people will just go around doing what they want, spending their money how they want. That's not good enough at all. PayPal recently shut down the accounts of anti-war publications. Yeah, that was a bit anti-social. Those wars are good. Uh, no, they weren't anti-war at all. For business, consortium news. Uh, w, uh, this is Mint Press, right. PayPal shuts down accounts of anti-war publications, uh, Consortium News and Mint Press News. Yeah, they weren't anti-war. News and Mint Press News. I mean, uh, I don't think they should be shut down on, on PayPal, but don't even pretend that they're anti-war. At the same time, Facebook and Microsoft are working with several other web giants in the United Nations on a database to block potential extremist content. Extremist. Socially acceptable. Just language, just words, just words closing in like an iron fist around your throat. The Jesus Christ. Don't panic, though. It's totally fine. He's got... As, uh, may I, if you're feeling a little freaked out right now, I'd like to remind you that Russell sells a meditation program. Growth of such restrictions could create a system in which individuals who do not hold certain political views could be blocked from polite society and left unable to make a living. It's not polite to destroy people's lives. The potential scope of the social credit... I don't know. Are they Nazis? Is that the thing? You know, because what they're talking about is if PayPal doesn't want to support a, a neo-Nazi organization or a neo-Nazi website that puts their money through there, does PayPal have a responsibility as a private company to carry a company that does things they find morally reprehensible? Russell is basically arguing that private companies should be forced on some level to carry the, the you know, the payment uh, to and from uh, like a 
Holocaust denial website, for example. The system under construction is enormous, it's, it's boundless. The same companies that can track your activities and give you corporate rewards for compliant behavior could utilize their powers to block transactions, add surcharges, or restrict your use of products. At what point does free speech make someone a target in this new system? Well, I'll leave it for you to discuss in- All right, and this is where I'll just jump by the way and sign up for my shit and da da da. Anyways, I'll just, I'm done. I'm sick of talking about it, really. What's, why, why would we even bother? Okay, let me, let me wrap this up, if I may. Um, there, were, there were similar um, scare, like fear-mongering practices around the introduction of the uh, personal computer, um, the automobile, um, shit, the Jesuits thought it was a mistake for everyone to learn to read because they were concerned that they would, uh, you know, misuse that ability and read the wrong stuff. That's been around for fucking ever. And yet, the introduction of the written word spun right along, and now you can get between uh, Apple Books and Scribed and any n corner of the fucking internet, you can read any book that was ever published ever for free. That's where we are. In the, in the great control that the government is looking for. And in countries that pride themselves on that freedom, it hardly behooves themselves to draw a line between themselves and, and autocracies and then behave like them. It is one of the defining characteristics between them. It's why we change um, who runs our countries on the regular. So this, this I mean, we know that Russell fear mongers for a fucking living. This is not any, this is no surprise to anybody. If you look at, um, well, here we go. Let me try and get, uh, yeah, here you go. We'll just pull up. If you just look at his fucking page, your blood is being sucked out and sold to China. Episode 24 of Stay Free. The Great Reset will happen with Eckhart Tolle. No, it won't. Could have, Amer oh, so he had Jocko Willink on, um, and I, I watched this one. Um, it didn't go the way Russell thought it was going to go. Kudos to Jocko Willink for speaking truth to power when it came to Russell. Because um, he says, let me see if this is the same clip. I think it probably it's is. It's all on the ballot. Make your voice heard. Vote Agreed. for Catherine Vote. Cortez Masto. Okay, so... Can I drag you back into the minutiae, right? One of the things they said around the Nord Stream 2 pipeline is it wouldn't be possible that, like, America don't have the submersive capacity. By the way, no one ever said America doesn't have the capacity to blow up the Nord Stream pipelines. Like, fucking no one. Of course they do. And so what he's, he's, this is a leading false question. So he knows that Jocko Willink will say, of course we have the ability to do it. And he'll go, aha. But uh, in this, this fake person that I've made up in my mind that will tell me that that it wasn't possible. It is possible. And that means they're hiding something. Truth doesn't. Would America, I think it's in the Baltic Sea at a level of 200 feet. Uh, purely hypothetically, would it be possible for a special forces team to undertake the sabotage of a pipeline? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> see, see how he laughs at it? Because he sets up this idea that he's been told a lie, and therefore Jocko Wellink just showed him that it was a lie, which nothing of the sort ever happened. Like, that's just garbage. He's just making that shit up. But wait, watch. Jocko's very smart. Watch what he says, and it, 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 you can tell this is rather disappointing. I, I, again, this is a bit of a cheat because I watched this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you have to? He also doesn't know why Russell is laughing. Do stuff like that. Explosives under the water. That's sort of Navy SEALs all day long, isn't it? Yeah, all day long. That's all they do. They just blow stuff up. They just kill whales. They just destroy pipelines for a living. It's all day long. That's what the Navy SEALs do. I mean, it probably would have been. It probably would have been uh, some kind of an unmanned drone. You know, an underwater drone that would do something like that. The the why would you send a diver down there when you could send a, a robot or a pig? That's right. A pipeline investigation or inspection gauge. Right, you can do that relatively easily. Thank you. Yeah, so can Russia. So can China. 
So can Iran, apparently. <laughs> no rest. Do you become cynical about those kind of uh, like the the? Do you become cynical about the way that these things are covered and reported, having a, a degree of understanding a, a, around how these how this stuff actually works? I I, I guess the only thing that I find and and I, you know when I see you I, you know when I see what you post about as well, I, I think it's just people get stuck into one like digital ecosystem in their brain. And depending on what side you're on, you either only listen to this ecosystem or you listen to this ecosystem. And there's not too many, there's not too many outlets that are sort of just trying to keep an open mind and listen to both sides of a story and just try and find out what the truth is. So that's what I think. And I think people uh, in social media go crazy about things that based on some assumption or based on the ecosystem that they're living in. So I think that's pretty, by the way, completely reasonable, um, recognition of the problem. Like that's, that's, he, he's not feeding anything. It's like, that's a, that's completely unfortunate. Reasonable. I'm not sure what's going to get us out of that, but it's pretty sad to see people that are so, so sucked into one methodology of thinking that you can't even really have a conversation with them. I know I, I have friends that are one extreme or another extreme, and it's hard to talk to them sometimes because they just don't, their mind is so closed off to, to hearing any other points of view. It can be very challenging to. And by the way, you guys have seen me go through a couple of thorny issues on this show where I did not necessarily toe the line, but try to you know inform you guys based on the reality and I know exactly what he's talking about. It's it's tough sometimes because some people just don't want to hear it. And and the thing is, if you could just hear the reality in a certain circumstance, even if it goes against the narrative you particularly believe, or or even something ethically or, or you know principally that you believe or feel, and it uh, it feels like an affront to that. Once you can move beyond the fact that it actually isn't, that it's not the argument you think it is, you can move on to the ones that are and solve the actual problems instead of the artificial ones put in front of you, which would be the things that are ultimately a distraction. You can have a discussion with them, and it's better just to not talk about it because, you know, if you're, you're my friend, Russell, and you're freaked out about something, and I say, well, there's another possible viewpoint, and you just get mad and started, you know, yelling at me, then maybe I'll just talk about something else. You know, how about... How about the football game? Let's talk about that instead. So I, I think our, our by the way, he's not friends with Russell. He's that's he's speaking and out. Uh, he's making an analogy. Media is definitely a problem. But I wonder if China and Russia indeed have expansionist goals of that nature. And it's pretty clear that the United States, or at least the set of interests represented by the United States government, do have an expansionist agenda that is, you know, causing, in my view unnecessary suffering yeah i'm not sure because if we if america had a true expansionist agenda we would have taken over the entire world you know after world war ii but we didn't um so i i don't know that that's the case or maybe it's there's a group of people that want to expand i think there's a there's you know i i think china may look to expand i mean when you look at what they're doing inside their culture it certainly seems evident that they're looking to expand obviously russia's trying to expand because they just invaded ukraine so there's some expansionists going on there um I, wait this is the part i love wait listen to this i don't part. think that america I, I actually don't think that america has an expansionist mindset because like i said otherwise we would have expanded we would have taken over everything and we didn't in fact, we nurtured Japan back to health. We nurtured Germany back to health where they could have their own country. Mm -hmm. That's what we've that's what we've done in these wars. So I don't really think that's a piece of it. But going to something else that you said, what's scary is, you know, you're saying, hey, with these wars that have taken place, it seems like we should have some kind of a massive social awakening. If World War I didn't trigger a massive social awakening to never have a war again, then I have no idea what it's going to take, Russell, because it wasn't, what, 20, 20 years later that World War II was kicking off? This is after millions and millions of men were slaughtered for nothing. 
And yet Mm -hmm. you fast forward a few years and we were in World War II. So I I don't know what kind of social awakening we could hope for. You have to understand, Jocko, he's selling the social awakening TM to his viewers as a possibility so that he can scratch him up. You understand? I'm not, I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. If World War One didn't do it, I, I'm... Yeah, it's a good point, Jet uh, says in the chat. What about Iraq and Afghanistan? We would have just kept them. Exactly. They, like Trump was saying, we should keep the oil and the rest of us in the United States were like, fuck that. What are you talking about? No. Trump was even, again, was going to stay in Afghanistan. I, like I said, I watched uh, that whole clip. If you want to watch it, you can uh, you can do so. But I thought it was a um, an excellent point that kind of blows a hole in Russell's entire sales pitch. Because he was like, I think China and Russia are just doing their thing, trying to just be left alone in the world. And yet the Americans are like trying to grab everything and, and imperialism and imperially imperialism. And you're like, motherfucker, we haven't even made Puerto Rico a state yet. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, it's so goofy. But again, if you're if your racket's gonna be hippie Alex Jones and Alex getting a little old and pointy headed, um, and he's not gonna be able to turn this thing into a um a, you know, into a and by the way, Jet, uh thanks for the these are the ones. Thank you. You were absolutely right and they're great. Um and also Um, so, <laughs> um, it's, it's important to understand that the, the Russell brands of the world are going to keep selling this point for as long as they can, as hard as they can, but it's a dead end because as I've said before, a level of optimistic stoicism is necessary in life for any success at all. You do not go to the gym or eat right or get married or fo- start a relationship or raise a child unless you think the tomorrow's going to be slightly better and you're going to participate in making it that way. And the folks that are selling the, you know, the doom and gloom, you know, hide in your fucking bunker or the they them, the big them is coming for you. Those folks are it, it's a scam. It's they absolutely wouldn't be there if they didn't think they were going to be there tomorrow. If they believed any of that shit, they wouldn't be there. They would they would be on a fucking pineapple farm like Jim Jones. It's a lie. Russell is selling the threat while living comfortably in the nest that it feathers. Same with Glenn Beck. Same with Ben Shapiro. I mean, look at Jordan Peterson's new uh, talk show, like Comfort Incorporated in the middle of hell. No, you know, just like, it's like there's just a big hell cow that they're all milking. So I, to me, the focus will be on like looking at the stuff so you guys know what the arguments are, know what you're, you know, what the other side is hearing and where their arguments are coming from, where the, the little weird thoughts and arguments and bullshit, where they start and then they work their way up the right wing ecosystem and they get out onto the airwaves on Fox and other shit like that. I'll show you where it starts on this show and I'll show you who's saying it in its purest form so you know exactly where it's going when somebody starts dipping their toe in about it. But I'm also going to let you know that you have nothing to fear from these fuckers. Go about your lives, vote, participate in society, and even when they win, they lose because it's their their entire economy is ba- is predicated on economic and spiritual victimhood. They don't do well when things are going well. They have no meaning. The rest of us do. And so I'm going to keep reminding you of that, and I love you guys, and I will see you guys tomorrow um, for the Thursday afternoon show. Again, it's later than usual. You know this. The uh, the afternoon show is on an, an hour later than normal. Um, appreciate you guys. Um, fear the Republican Party. I will not, Chris. I do not fear the Republican Party at all. I don't. Because fear is one of the few, one of the things that they will talk you into. It will It will give them legitimacy. Your fear means there's something really there, that they're really, they are a boogeyman. I must be a boogeyman if you're afraid of me. That's why I never get like, you know, angry in my language with Trump. I am always fucking with him because 
anger, fear, distrust, hatred. The, it, dude absorbs those things. It's proof that what he's doing is working. But mockery, derision, and disregard is absolutely what flattens his tires. We have nothing to fear, including fear itself. And remember, and I, I built this, hold on, did I put it in here? Hold on, I've got to put this. Um, oh, it's got to be in here. Hold on. I might as well add it while I'm here. The thing I added during my um, break, add to, where you go? Add it to there. Cool. we we'll go back to here. Um, I'm going to make this gigantic. Hold on. Remember, it is an election season. And if you are presented with a choice that you believe is the lesser of two evils, it's fucking easy. Choose less evil. Love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. Okay, bye. Vote blue no matter who, baby. That's right.